Hello guys, welcome to Datafuse Analytics and let's start our end-to-end -end course on Transformers. It all started in 2017 when Google published a paper named as Attention is All You Need, which is even dubbed as The Transformer. This proposed state-of-the-art architecture outperformed almost all the existing machine translation systems which is based on recurrent neural networks or RNN in terms of both quality as well as in cost of training. A parallel development of an architecture named as ULM FIT showed that training LSTM or long short term memory networks on a large and diverse corpus produce state of the art text classifiers with little labeled data. These advances were the catalyst or accelerators for two of today's most well-known transformers, the GPT or Generative Pre-Trained Transformer and BERT or BERT or Bidirectional Encoder Representations from Transformers. Prior to Transformers, recurrent architectures such as RNNs and LSTMs were the state of the art in NLP. These architectures contain a feedback loop in the network connections that allows information to propagate from one step to another, making them ideal for modeling sequential data like text. As illustrated on this left hand side of the figure, this RNN receives some input, this input can be a word or a character and feeds it through the network and finally outputs a vector called as hidden state. At the same time, the model feeds some information back to itself through this feedback loop. Now which it can then use in the next step. Now this can be more clearly seen if we unroll the loop which is shown in this right hand side of the figure. In this right hand side of the figure, the RNN passes information about its state at each step or at its time step to the next operation in the sequence. This allows an RNN to keep track of information from previous steps and use it for its output predictions. One area where RNNs played an important role was in the development of machine translation systems, where the objective is to map a sequence of words in one language to another language. For example, English to French, French to English, or from language 1 to language 2. This kind of task is usually tackled with an encoder-decoder or sequence-to-sequence -sequence based architecture which is well suited for situations where the input and output are both sequences of any arbitrary length. The job of the encoder is to encode the information from the input sequence into a numerical representation that is often called as the last hidden state. Now this state is then passed to the decoder which generates the output in the sequence or which generates the output sequence. In this figure, the blue box is the encoder, the red box is the decoder and the black box between encoder and decoder is the hidden state. In general, the encoder and the decoder components can be any kind of neural network architecture that can model sequences. This is illustrated for a pair of recurrent neural networks in this figure, where the English sentence transformers are great is encoded as this hidden state vector that is then decoded to produce its corresponding German translation. The input words are fed sequentially through the encoder and the output words are generated one at a time that is from top to bottom or left to right. Although elegant in its simplicity, one weakness of this architecture is that this final hidden state or the black box in between encoder and decoder, it creates an information bottleneck. It has to represent the meaning of the whole input sequence because this is all the decoder has access to when it's generating the output. This is especially challenging for long sequences where the information at the start of the sequence might get lost in the process of compressing everything to a single fixed representation what we call it a last hidden state. 
then what is the solution for this here comes the solution the main idea behind attention is that instead of producing a single hidden state for the input sequence the encoder outputs a hidden state at each step that the decoder can access however using all the states at the same time would create a huge input for the decoder so we have to have some mechanism to prioritize which states to use or which of these black boxes to use this is where attention mechanism comes in or attention comes in it lets the decoder assign a different amount of weights or priorities or attentions to each of the encoder state at every decoding time step by focusing on what input tokens are most relevant at each time step these attention based models are able to learn non trivial arrangements or alignments between the words in a generated translation and those in the source sentence although attention enabled the production of much better translations there was still a major gap or major shortcoming or a major research gap by using recurrent models for the encoder and decoder because the computations are inherently sequential and cannot be parallelized across the input hence while training a model it used to take huge amount of time when we use recurrent models for encoder and decoder with the transformer a new modeling paradigm was introduced it states that we have to dispense with recurrence altogether and instead rely entirely on special form of attention which we call as self attention so this is how it all started this is how the attention mechanism came in this is how the self attention mechanism came into play in the next session we will see why we will use hugging face library we will see what is exactly the hugging face ecosystem and what all components are there in the hugging face ecosystem we will see how hugging face is bridging the gap but what is the gap that also we will be seeing in the next session so meet you in the next video guys thank you